This video presents our teardrop camper, something we're very proud of. First we'll have a look at the end result and then go back to the build. It includes all the standard trailer type couplings. It incorporates a custom built box that I made in my shed. It holds things like the chairs, the annex, uh, the power cord, etc. Because it's only a small camper, we have two doors so we don't have to climb over each other to get out. The camper is only 1200 wide, cosy but adequate, and incorporates a clothing cupboard inside. The cupboard incorporates a small slide out shelf to put your iPhone etc in, and as you can see, it's uh, quite generous inside. On both sides of the cupboard, we've got power sockets so we can charge our phones etc. There are privacy blinds on both doors. Above each tail rail is a touch operated LED light. In the centre of the roof is a caravan style wind up vent. One of the best things we did was put in a solar panel. With the solar panel we're completely independent for power and don't need a powered site when we go camping. The back of the van has the kitchen. The hatch is held up with gas struts. We have a small 12 volt water pump attached to this neat little tap. Under this hatch we just have a 10 litre water container that the pump hose goes into. Makes it much easier for refilling as the water container is removable. Beside the water container you can see the battery, the solar controller and all the wires coming from the lights and power sockets etc. The fridge sits on the other side of the water container. Everything you see is hand built by Don and he's done a fantastic job. The quality is absolutely exceptional. The elastic stops things sliding around when we're on the move. We seem to have LED lights everywhere and of course there's one for the kitchen as well. Just near the tea towel rail. We've used sail track to edge both sides of the van. This sail track is used to put the annex on. It was a bit of a challenge to work out how to bend this stuff, but we eventually worked it out. The chassis is just standard leaf spring, but it also incorporates electric brakes. Of course, these aren't needed when towing with the car, but when towing with the trike, they're very useful. That's it for the finished product. Now let's have a look at some pictures of the build. My contribution to the build was doing the steel work. This was my excuse to buy my first welder and learn the welding skills. The frame is made from strips of 8th inch ply. And as you can see here, the jig is set up and the ply is all glued up. And here's the final frame. Next came the inside frame skin. And then assembly to the base. The inside skin for the roof went on next. Here's Don working on the roof. You can get an idea of the size of the van now. It took Don a lot of effort to get that back hatch right. To get the correct position for the axle, we loaded the van front and back and then found the balance point and then put the axle just behind that. I learned how to weld aluminium while making this box for the front of the van. It incorporates a curve at the back to match the front curve of the van. With the skeleton all together, it's starting to look like a camper. So next comes all the internal furnishing of the cupboards and handles and latches and electrics. There's certainly a poo load of detail. And before the outer skin goes on, the insulation has to go in. The outer skin is an aluminium sandwich. It's the material used for signs. It incorporates two very thin sheets of aluminium with plastic in between. The roof skin is a commercially purchased sheet of fiberglass. The roof hatch was also purchased. Almost finished, just the mud guards to go. So here are a few shots of the inside.
Wendy made the annex, which rounded out the perfect camping experience. Sometimes we tow the camper with the car, sometimes with the trike. I couldn't be happier with the end result. Don's done a perfect job on this camper. It's given us the chance to experience the serenity of many perfect locations in Australia.